Hello and welcome to the course Differential Equations in Linear Algebra. Uh, in this introductory video, which is the first of a series of videos, we're really going to just talk about some real basics of what is a DE, but also uh, put this in context to you, the students, which are, we're really focusing on those who are scientists and, of course, engineers. And so far, uh, where you are in your training is you've probably studied, uh, you know, algebra. Uh, sorry, oops. And of course, many semesters of calculus. Okay, so what I really want to do is study, you know, the idea of what a DE is, a differential equation, and contrast it with that. Uh, of what you've done, all the work you've done, and all the skills you've learned so far. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about calculus. So calculus, of course, so calculus, of course, is that, uh, what I like to say about calculus is it really is this, is that uh, it offers some descriptive tools. To study uh, functions. So, for instance, the, what I'm going to talk about is like x of t, right? So x of t is a function where t is the independent variable. Right, and then x is the sort of the output. Uh, the output variable. So, of course, if I draw a graph like so, oops, I'm going to draw that a little bit more square like that. So t goes on that axis, and x goes up there, and then x might be some function that makes that graph like so. So of course the idea is like, you know, the questions you might ask are, you know, oh, what's the nature, you know, how, how to uh, describe x, right? So of course we can talk about, you know, how fast it changes or its slope. Of course, we have a tool to des describe the slope of a function. Of course, we call it x prime of t, or rather dx dt. Of course, that's one of our core um, tools that we use in calculus. And of course, we can also talk about you know things like the area under the curve. So I might talk about the integral from a to b of x of t dt. So of course here there would be a point, and I want to find its slope, and that will be x prime. And of course, I could go from a to b and think about the area under the curve, and I can use tools of calculus to describe these quantities. All right, so what I, I really want to reinforce is that notion of descriptive, because it describes aspects. It gives you know, aspects uh, of x. You can think of this as some sort of aspect of x. It gives you some way of describing the behavior of x. Okay. All right, so with that said, um, of course, we also know that your, your calculus is, uh, you know, is, is really connected to uh, physics. For... Uh, as, as students, you've studied calculus along with your physics. Of course, we know that, uh, you know, object motion is, is a big one. So, for instance, if you have a, a x of t, it could be a position. And, of course, then velocity, v of t, would be the velocity. And we know an important relationship, which we use, of course, our calculus to describe, which is x prime of t is equal to v of t. All right, and of course, we also have the acceleration a of t, which is, of course, the accel acceleration. Okay, and of course, that is x double prime of t, which is a v prime of t, which is a of t. Okay, so again, calculus plays a role in describing the relationship between position, velocity, and acceleration. 
all important things for understanding object motion, which is a critical part of uh, the physics we all learn together with calculus. So there's where you add as a student, there's some examples of how calculus plays a role in our in our day-to-day -day understanding of, of, of the world uh, and object motion in particular. Uh, and of course, um, to get from one to the other, of course, if I, V of T, if I want to know, if I have a question then, uh, you know, which is X of T, I want to know what X of T is, and, that, and I, I have a V of T, if that's a function I know, then of course I know that X of T, I can get it by taking an antiderivative uh, that way. Or if I want to know the distance traveled, I know that it's, uh, uh, I can take a definite interval uh, from uh, time equals a to, to time equals b, I know it's going to be uh, the, integrate, the integral from a to b of v of t. So calculus gives us all sorts of tools to describe those things. Okay, so let's go on now uh, and talk about how does this relate to differential equations? What makes differential equations different? So again, the question now, the big question is, what is a d e? Okay, so most generally, it's an equation involving a function, uh, x of t, and its uh, uh, derivatives. Okay, so for instance, I have f, this big function. It could be a function of t, x of t, x prime of t, x double prime of t, and so on. And we set it equal to zero. So it's some function like that. Okay. So uh, let's. Uh, uh, so that's the most general, and the idea here is that the uh, what we want to do then there, the function x of t is uh, unknown. Okay, and the goal then, of course, is to, and I put it in quotes, solve for x. Okay. So remember, you know, back when you were in grade school, of course, in algebra, of course, you did a lot of uh, solving for x, right? And solving for x. x was a number. Of course, in DEs, x is now an unknown function. Okay, let's, let's talk for a second and understand x of t. What is a function? So a function, in the most general sense, is it, it, it describes a relationship. Oops. So it describes a relationship, uh, and that is between uh, t and x, right? And I would li I'd like to just pause for a second and, and, and make very clear that this is a you know a much a more rich uh, object. Uh, compared to uh, to uh, uh, just a real number, an input-output relationship. The idea that it describes a relationship is a more complicated, it's a more rich and more interesting mathematical object than simply. Uh, in algebra, where x was simply a number. Okay, so of course, uh, and 
the, the tools we use to describe these objects then is a differential equation. And the idea of solving for x now takes on a whole new meaning. Okay, so let's end this little video with just some examples. And I'll just give a simple example again from object motion. Okay, so object motion we have, for instance, we had, as we've written before, uh, we had x, and then of course x prime is equal to v of t, and of course we had x double prime is equal to uh, um, v prime of t, which is equal to a of t. Uh, we've seen that from before. Now we also know that there's that second law of motion, and that's Newton's law, which is f equals ma. All right, so let's talk about, I'm going to give an example, I'll call this de number one, your first de that we've encountered in this class, which is that, of course, if we make v uh, prime of t is equal to um, is equal to a of t, which I wrote before. I'm going to take this law of motion and talk about near Earth uh, gravity. And so the force we're going to describe, the force in F equals ma, is going to be negative mg on some objects. We have some mass, and it's being pulled down by a force, F, which is mg. Of course, and we know that's equal to ma, uh, which is equal to mv prime of t. All right, so what we can write down is our first de, which here it is. It's going to be, uh, we can cancel, of course, the uh, m's. And of course, g is that gravitational constant. So we're going to say it's 9.8. We're going to use scientific units, 9.8 meters per second uh, squared. All right, so it's going to be v dv dt, that's v prime, is equal to negative 9.8. All right, so there's our first DE. I can put it in the format of uh, our definition and say that this is actually dV dt plus 9.8 is equal to F. And this time, F is only a function of V prime uh, equal to zero. Okay, and that's our first DE. And we call this a first order DE. And it's a first order because uh, the highest derivative uh, order derivative is, is just a, a first order. Okay, so now let's talk about another DE. And that's going to, we'll call this DE number two. And that's going to be, of course, the one for... Um, Actually, sorry, I'm going to go back one second uh, and, and, and simply say what the unknown here then, the unknown that we want to solve for, we want to solve for v of t. That will be our unknown function that we want to solve. And now in this video, I'm not going to actually solve for v of t. We'll do that in the next videos. But for now, uh, that's just what we're going to write down as our unknown. Okay, so this is de2. Uh, and the DE2, again, is going to be involved with, so if x double prime is equal to v prime, which is equal to uh, uh, a, we can do f equals ma again. And now say that, so we know again that, uh, so we get, from this equation, what we can get from it is, if it is if x double prime is equal to v prime, which is equal to negative 9.8. And so now we have an equation which the unknown then is we're going to solve for x of t as the unknown. That's going to be our objective, uh, is to find that uh, uh, thing. And the dE then, what we'll call dE2, is going to be x double prime plus 9.8 is equal to 0. Of course, this right there represents my DE, and it's going to be F of X double prime is equal to zero. This, this thing right here represents our function, and it's a function of X double prime, and then, of course, the goal is to, uh, you know, find X. All right, so we can then, of course, I'll, I'll give you another example that doesn't, uh, 
where I can't derive uh, specifically from a, a particular uh, a physical law, but we could write uh, an equation like this, x double prime plus 2x prime plus x is equal to, um, uh, you know, uh, a function uh, uh, t squared plus 2. Okay, so this, of course, I could write this in a form. I could, I could write this as my de would be x, x prime, x double prime, and also, of course, t in there thrown in could be made out of that equation there. And for both of these equations, of course, this is a, these are both second order, of course. And I could go on further. This is the third example. We could talk about third order equations, fourth order equations, and so on and so forth. So that's the, the nature of DEs. All right, so finally, just to conclude this video, the idea here is, uh, you know, where does this sit within um, the, the bigger picture? So uh, in this course, okay, so first of all, the one thing we're going to do is uh, explore many, many types of DEs and uh, most specifically uh, 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 employ uh, methods to solve them. Okay, All right, the second thing we're going to really do is, of course, we have to actually create uh, DEs via uh, mathematical models. Uh, modeling. So typically uh, a, a problem, you know, problem solving it starts like this and this is basically the idea of what this class is really based on and what's its point is you really you start first with some sort of physical question Uh, question, right? And that is, uh, you know, the question could be, what's the what's the motion of an object? What's the position of an object? What? How do I describe its motion? So I want to know what its position is over time, and that will lead us to um, some sort of modeling step. And that's where we actually develop, uh, you know, we find a DE that helps us find x of t. So we want to find f x, x prime, x double prime, and so on and so forth, equal to zero. The next thing to do is actually use some sort of method uh, to solve. All right, and so we'll find x of t. Yay, we did it. And then finally, we, of course, we need to interpret our results. Does it answer our question? Did x of t, you know, the idea is we might want to graph x like this, find out what it's doing, what its behavior is by looking at what x of t, the result of our, of our, of our efforts uh, through this process. So these are the four stages of a problem-solving problem, solving problem uh, with DEs, where, the, where I think the critical one here is actually uh, uh, finding the DE, but also having a good physical question and then the method to solve, and then, of course, interpretation. They all really are very important for, for, uh, for learning how DEs fit into it. And, of course, I'd say, uh, actually, uh, you know, physics, calculus, and differential equations, they were all historically developed together. In fact, calculus was really developed in order to, uh, in, in the context of, of differential equations. Uh, when Newton had the apple fall in his head, at least metaphorically, or I don't know if it actually happened, but the idea is that it fell in his head, and it was, it was DEs that he was concerned with, and, and that is what we're going to be concerned with in this course here. So I look forward to making more videos, and I, I hope that you will watch them. Thank you very much.